Welcome to Sound Advice with Phyllis Nichols. This podcast is for women and the men who love them who are determined to make a difference in the world. You'll hear from other women who followed their own path to success, who are willing to share what they've learned along the way. Be ready to laugh, learn, and be inspired. Who knows, your story could be next. Your host, Phyllis Nichols, will make sure you see the possibilities in your own life, and even better, give you proven strategies to get you from where you are to where you want to be. Thank you for joining us today on the Sound Advice Podcast. This is Phyllis Nichols. We're really happy to have a guest with us today, and my guest is Kylie Slavic. Hi, Kylie. Hey, Phyllis. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, happy to have you on. For people who might not know you, let me just do a quick little intro for Kylie. She is a launch expert and a brand story coach for female entrepreneurs and coaches. She spent six years behind the scenes working for companies like Max Simon's Big Vision Business, Gina DeVee's Divine Living, and Kendall Summerhawk before launching her own company, Success Stories. Kylie's generated millions from her story-based Facebook ads, has run lucrative campaigns on LinkedIn, and managed high-level joint venture platforms. She specializes in helping you find your unique voice and value in your market so that you can stand out, attract clients, and fill your programs through your personal story. And I know that Kylie's got a, is just really talented at doing this. So welcome, and thank you for being here with us today. My pleasure. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Okay, so let's just, uh, the first question I always like to ask everyone when we get started is to just share a piece of sound advice that's just been meaningful to you or something that you find yourself going back to over and over. Yeah, so it's, it's an interesting question. I, when I was, before I was really an entrepreneur, I was working in restaurant management and I read this article on the wall one time that the chef had put up and it was by a chef. And he was telling, he was discouraging everybody who wanted to be a chef from being a chef. And he was talking about the long hours and you'll never see your family and every Friday and Saturday is gone and every holiday. And it went on and on and on like this. And then the punchline at the end of the article was, unless all you can think about in the middle of the night is like preparing the creme brulee and the duck and, you know, like if that's really who you are, then become a chef. And then he was like, and then he switched tones and he gave all this advice to like that specific person. And it was a really, it really blew my mind. And I think about it all the time in terms of entrepreneurship. And I, I, I know there's two types of entrepreneurs. Some people are just like, what do people want to buy? I'm going to sell it. But for me, it's really about the passion and the drive that keeps me going and that keeps me moving through every day. Um, I, so, so I wrote a blog po- post called Don't Do It, the best business advice I've ever received. And it was about that article. And I, I feel like for me, it's a constant process of checking in and, and figuring out, am I doing what I'm really the most excited about, what I'm really the most passionate about? And when that happens, I'm like jumping out of bed in the morning and I'm so excited to, to work with my clients and, deliver my programs. And when I get off track a little bit and, and maybe I'm thinking a little bit too much about, yeah, you know, what are people thinking about me or what, do you know, what, mm-hmm. what do people want to buy? Then, you know, I lose my spark and it just doesn't work for me. So. Well, that's pretty powerful. Now you mentioned that there's two types of entrepreneurs. You're saying one type is just someone that sort of likes to maybe dive in to see what's the hot new thing and get involved and sort of do that. And then the other are people that are just really drawn to a specific passion maybe or something that they, um, I've heard it said this way, like what is it, what is it that you can't not do? That's exactly it right there. I think that's what I was trying to get at. Yeah. And I think there's probably more, you know, more than two types, but it was funny because it never occurred to me that that people were driven by anything but like fire and passion. <laughs> and then like I wrote that blog post and this lady made a comment and she's like, you know, I have no passion for my business. What I I I found something that's lucrative, that's sustainable so that I could, you know, do my hobbies, which are hiking and skiing and all this other stuff and spend time with my family. And I was like, oh, that's cool. That makes total sense. I could never function that way. But she she was in retail and she was like, I don't like it. I don't even really get that excited about it, but it gives me freedom in other areas. And then it occurred to me, oh, there's like this whole other world out there I've never been exposed to, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, so you've 
obviously done really well with this and you've been able to help other people as well. What what might others learn from your experience or your journey in figuring this out? I think it's sometimes this is that space that's hard for people to figure. Yeah, so I think the most important thing, especially if you're in like what I call the information transformation industry, coaching, consulting, helping service-based businesses, I think really understanding your core story is what makes the biggest difference because You know, when I was starting, you know, about seven years ago or so, when I was really starting to get into internet marketing, everybody said, sell results, sell results, sell results. Well, my result would basically be getting you more clients, getting you, you know, helping you fill your group programs, financial freedom, time freedom. How many times a day do you hear that message? So many times. And so, so for me, it's, we've got to go a step further than selling results. And we really have to get into our story about why we're doing it, about, you know, what the results have done for us, what they've done for our clients. And that's what helps people either identify with you or not identify with you. And at the end of the day, I think that's what's going to inspire people to buy from you or not to. Right. Absolutely. So results do matter, obviously, but it's I'm with you because I think there's a lot of confusion sometimes that where it's sort of like, well, I've had these results, this feeling like, well, how do I know that your results are going to translate into my results? Exactly. So you're saying if you can kind of tap into your story or our personal stories about what we're doing and we're going to reach the right audience and then that's going to really be the catalyst for getting the results that we're looking for. Yeah, I think that if people can see themselves in your story, they're going to, mm-hmm. they're going to trust that sort of objection of how do I know if you're really telling the truth or how do I know your results mean anything to me? I think if we can make that really basic human connection with somebody, then that it establishes trust, it establishes credibility, and it overcomes a lot of the creeping doubts that that come up. You know, we're a lot of us are marketers, we're entrepreneurs, but we have to be marketers. And I always tell my clients, look, you're selling something. So the general public is already going to have objections just based on the fact that you're selling something. And the best way to overcome that is through becoming human, right? Like, and, Mm -hmm. and, and letting them know you understand them, that you've been where they are. Um, And that you get it and that you care about them. That's another thing, too. You know, people are definitely going to buy from people that they feel like actually cares about them as opposed to someone who's just kind of out there trying to make a lot of money. And, you know, you can tell the difference. And I think it didn't it wasn't always that way. But the trend is showing more and more that people are putting their money where their values are and where they feel connected. I agree. And I think that's a great line um, about resonating with your values. Um, I was just writing something the other day about how our confidence really goes back to our values. You know, the things that are important to us um, are typically things that we can feel confident about. And I mean, our story obviously comes into play with that as well. Big time. Like your why, I always tell people your why story is so important. People toss the why story around like a sort of like cheap buzzword sometimes in business. Like, oh yeah, let them know why, why your family or freedom or time freedom or travel. And I think for most people, it really does go a lot deeper than just those things. Right. And right. when we really share that stuff with people, then they know, you know, whether or not they want to buy from us instead of somebody else. And and Yannick Silver just put out a new book, Evolved Enterprise, and I read it. And he said, even in product sales, people are like just in the last few years, and he thinks he predicts with all these numbers and facts that this trend is increasing, that basically what it is is that people, even in product sales, are willing to pay more money for the same thing if they feel like that company shares their values. And so like a chocolate bar that's you know, maybe 10 cents is going to the rainforest. They'll pay, right, right. they'll pay a dollar more for that chocolate than a Hershey's bar. This is happening even in product sales. So you can bet it's happening in coaching, consulting, healing. And, um, and yeah, like a lot of women especially feel like, yeah, my why story is not that important or my story is not significant. But I say like, as soon as you start to really put it out there more and more and more, you're going to find those people who really resonate with it. They're definitely going to buy from you and not somebody else. There's real power, too, in sort of claiming it and owning it. I agree completely. And I'm seeing that in my own business because I'm partnered with a, a tra- an anti-trafficking organization in Austin called Allies, okay. called Allies Against Slavery. And 
And I really put it out there like, look, 10% of our business profit goes directly to trafficking survivors to empower them with entrepreneurial skills. So they have alternative options to, you know, a lot of a lot of those women go back to that life, not because they want to, but because if you have a 20 year gap in employment history, the world is a little bit unfriendly about that. So they're training, they're giving them psychological support, they're giving them housing, clothing, but they're also giving them skills. So it makes it, it fits perfectly with my business model. And so when I share that with people in my marketing, the people who have a heart for that, they're going to learn business and marketing from me as opposed to somebody who doesn't share that story. And I'm seeing it more and more and more in the last couple of months that that's true. Oh, that's fantastic. And what a great cause. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that, too. I, I had never really thought about that. But you're right. Um, Just, you know, not only the empowerment part of just learning a new skill, which empowers all of us, um, but then being able to say, yeah, I have now different life choices than I had before. That has to be really life changing for the women that um, you're helping. Yeah. And they call it like the survivor leadership program. So they're not just, you know, and and, and that's another thing Yannick says in that book is that like your your cause has to make sense for your organization, right? Like, like people have to get it right away when they hear it. If they have to think too much about why, you know, about, yeah. about your why, you've kind of lost their attention. So, you know, and I just picked that and in, in, in the sense of it all revealed itself to me afterwards. But it did make, it does make sense. It does fit. You know, my business is about empowering women. The organization is about empowering women and it all ties together. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. Well, and it's obvious that you have a passion for it. So it's, uh, you know, I'm sure everybody, not just me, but I mean, obviously people recognize that when you're talking about it, when you're sharing it with them. Absolutely. Yeah, Pete, that's the other thing is that like in storytelling and business and marketing, integrity is so obvious, right? Like you, you can't fake it. And it's, and so I think people are, I tell people all the time in my programs, like people are really getting sick of like the smoke and mirrors of this industry. They want truth. They want you. They want they want you, you know, and and so they're not going to know what that even is if you don't tell them. And I think a lot of women especially are shy about talking about themselves or sharing themselves. But the market is starving for authenticity. And when people go out there and they're just all hyped up and puffed up, that used to work. And like it kind of reminds me of like the 1980s infomercial model. But it's becoming more and more and more um exhausting for everybody and I call it adrenal pulling marketing actually and Mm -hmm. and that's what it feels like and that's how people are receiving it and I think there's just a better way and it's really sharing you and that's what people are really wanting yeah that's very powerful and you're right Um, I think there's definitely just a fatigue around that sort of other style of marketing um, both for people who want to who have been doing it and I think obviously for people who've been consuming it as well yeah people are just sick of it I mean you invest all this money in programs and you don't get the results you want and then it's like oh but I was promised this this and this and that's that's another thing when we're marketing ourselves and positioning ourselves like I don't make I have a launch program that I do uh It teaches women how to package their programs and how to launch them and fill their group programs. And what I tell people when I'm selling it is, look, I'm not promising you any specific result. What I'm promising you is that you will have every single thing you need to to create and design and launch a really lucrative launch. You'll never need another program on launching. Like this has everything you need. I've been doing this for years. Mm-hmm. And and then it's like, okay, then they, they relax around that, you know, because it takes the pressure off. They're not like competing with each other in the program. They're supporting each other. They're not like it, it takes the pressure off of them. And then they get they get better results when I just tell them the truth about what they're getting instead of trying to hype it up and and tell them, yeah, you're going to make a million dollars. They can make a million dollars. And it's great. You know, when they hit these high revenue points, that makes me very, very happy. But I can't guarantee results and that's just the truth. So right. And everybody's everybody's going to be looking even for different things. Not everybody their goals and and um aspirations are going to be different and how they use the the information that you're sharing with them. Well, and that's true too, exactly. Yeah. So right. I think people what I'm noticing more and more as I market my business is that people are really relaxing around being told the truth even if the mm-hmm. truth doesn't look as shiny and glittery and exciting <laughs> as something else because they they've invested in that already 
and now they just want to know they know that it's going to take work they under they they don't want someone to hand them this easy sugar-coated solution that they've already tried didn't work they want someone just to tell them like how did you get there what can I do it might not be the fastest easiest shiniest path but I want to get there what is it and so that's what I do for people I think no, I th- I know you absolutely do that. Um, I'm I'm curious. What's one of the favorite things, um, about the work that you do? What do you What is something that you really enjoy the most? Well, I love coaching, um, in group format because I I love just watching people transform. I love watching them relax into themselves and grow into their power. But I really love the group coaching process because I love watching. You know, women traditionally have been in the in the marketplace a little bit competitive towards each other. And I love creating and holding space for a group of women to come together and just be incredibly supportive, mastermind with each other, really tell each other what's working, share secrets with each other, support each other. And then like on Facebook, I see all my clients promoting each other and, and like, like helping each other out. And I just think it's so awesome. Like that's one of my favorite things to see. And then of course, like, you know, one of my clients came to me and said, hey, I, I had a $20,000 day on Periscope. And, you know, when I hear stuff like that, I'm super excited. But I think for me, I really, really love to, to see them form communities around these ideas that are, are integrity driven. Oh, yeah, that's really powerful. And on a Periscope, that's crazy. Oh, I know. How cool is that? Okay. Um, well, before we wrap up here, a couple of things. We've been talking a lot about your business practice, and I appreciate you've given us really a ton of valuable information. Um, but what's something that people would be surprised to know about you? What's something maybe that people don't know? I know you share your story very openly, but anything that you'd like to share with our audience today? Um, you know, <laughs> there's probably <laughs> so many things. Let me try to think. Um I mean, I have a lot of hobbies that are kind of weird. So I, I don't do, I don't open my laptop until I run two miles. And that's like super important to me. Like I pray and I meditate and I run two miles before I even think about my business in the morning. Um, I play a really rare instrument called the hand pan and I'm, I'm, sometimes I joke they're very difficult to obtain and they're really rare. And so sometimes I joke that like my business, the only reason I have a business is to support my hand pan habit. <laughs> Oh, fun. Yeah, and they're like these weird sort of UFO looking, um, like, they, they're they the only instrument that has both percussion and melody, so they're just really, really fascinating to me. Um oh, Yeah, I've studied with um, Maori healer type people, uh, indigenous people of New Zealand. I've studied healing with them for like the last 10 years, and so I try to bring a lot of what they've taught me into my business, which is kind of different, but... I've had a lot of, you know, kind of weird experiences along those lines. <laughs> oh, well, that's neat. I think it's pretty cool. And I love your practice. So tell me, how long have you been doing what you mentioned about, you know, your, your prayer meditation and running two miles before you open the laptop or look at anything business-wise? How long have you been doing that practice? Well, not very long, but it's really changed my life. So I just started running three months ago. And I just, okay. and, and even like, I even when I was working for other people, I was like, the minute my eyes opened, I was on my phone checking my email until I went to sleep. And I just realized, like, I'm making a lot of money. I'm having a lot of impact. The quality of my life is not so good. And so when I started my own brand and I and I launched my own company, I told myself, I am I am in control of the situation. And none of those other people ever asked me to do that. I just felt more obligated because it was their company. Sure, sure. Right. But I told myself, I'm not going to do that. Like, I'm putting my spiritual practice first. I'm putting my body and my health first. I'm not going to be a workaholic and, you know, during launch time, it, it can get crazy still, but, but, and, and the thing is too, with my team, I'm like, you're taking holidays off. You're, you know, like you're not, my team came to me and they're like, this is our work hours and this is what we're doing. And I don't ask them to do anything outside of those hours. Um, we have really good boundaries around our time and our scheduling on my team. And I, I'm really working to create a company culture where we put ourselves first in the business business second and I I think that's really important oh that's awesome I I love that and I definitely can relate to that that sense of urgency of always needing to get really busy and there's lots of things to do because I think as entrepreneurs there's always something else we could be working on or that we could go ahead and tackle today you know and so putting that 
emphasis on the other aspects of our life and things like that is is really important to be really intentional about it too that's awesome yeah and I think it comes down to especially for women like we're we're naturally inclined towards like saying yes and doing more (laughs) doing more than we should I think it's I think it comes down to there's never going to really be a good time for a vacation. There's never going to be a great time to just go to the spa. So, like, in the middle of my launch last week, I took a day off, and my aunt has a, um esthetician business, and I got a facial, and I was like, you know, I should be writing emails and running traffic, but I'm just going to lay here for two hours and hang out with my aunt and get – my, you know, get a facial. And I was like, this is really how I want to run my business for the rest of my life. <laughs> like, this is – so, yeah. Well, yeah, I'm with you. I think that sounds fantastic. Well, thanks for being with us today. Um, I'm going to have on the website, obviously, we'll have uh, ways to contact Kylie, um, get in touch with her. The best way right now, though, if you want to reach out or you're listening and you'd like to check out what she's doing, go to her website, which is KylieSlavic.com. I'm going to go ahead and spell it, which is K-Y-L-I-E. S L A V I K dot com and um, uh, she has her social media contacts and other things are there so you can definitely get in touch with her uh, but thank you for coming on Kylie I appreciate it you're a great guest and uh, I look forward to learning more from you as your company continues to grow and impact great it was my pleasure thanks for having me on yep take care alright bye Till next time, have fun, be you, and share your sound advice with the world. For more info and show notes, or to connect with Phyllis, go to soundadvicesales.com or on Facebook at Sound Advice Sales. This podcast is part of the Sound Advice FM network. Sound Advice FM, women's voices amplified.